we set U.S. Fest up, we wanted to do a number of activities, all with the central goal of creating demand among kids to excel in math and science, and in, and in other kids, not even to excel, but to appreciate the importance of it, to become competent and literate in math and science. So I decided that an alternative to a hands-on science center would be to use the techniques of 20th century media uh, to create a demand side for science and technology as we have in things like sports. And U.S. First is really the, the result of various activities to try to do that. Roland Schmidt, who is the president of RPI and also a, a uh, member of the executive committee of the Council on Competitiveness, invited us down to the council and we got to spend an hour with all of these world-class companies and basically I said to them, you're all wringing your hands as to what to do about education, but you're all trying to solve the supply problem. You're going to adopt the school. You're going to create some other program. Well, the fact is, even you giant companies can't do much compared to the nearly $300 billion we spend on education. You'll only add a drop in the bucket. What you guys can do that nobody can do is you are the repository of all the great engineers of this country. You should put them on display and create role models. Forget about the supply side. You can't do much there. Attack the demand side. Help us do things that will make engineering important and fun for these kids. And you can do it because we'll make it easy for you. We're going to make a competition and you guys are going to play a game. Your chairman, Paul Allaire, who right there at that meeting handed me uh, a card off the table. He said, I don't have a business card, but here, call me up. And he wrote his name on the back of the card and said, call me. Xerox wants to participate in this. This afternoon, what we'd like to do is to give you some exposure to a contest which we learned about only five days ago. And in six weeks minus one day, a competition will be held February 13th in Manchester, New Hampshire. It uh, began uh, within a number of hours before I left for my Christmas vacation where I received a message over my star that said there would be a contest um, and that the first part of that contest would be a workshop to be held January 3rd in New Hampshire. I submitted my name as a you know, possible candidate, not expecting anything to happen, and I was chosen. I went away on vacation, came back, and I think it was literally the next day, um, uh, Carlton Smith, Christine Cummings, and I were on a plane bound for New Hampshire. Uh, without any clear expectations of what was going to happen other than we would be given the rules of the contest at that point and a kit of materials that we would bring back from which we would build and construct a vehicle. Um, with regard to what we brought back with us was a vision of a very exciting contest that would involve high school students on the one hand, but also draw very extensively from our, our engineering skills on the other hand. I believe there's a lot of help to the engineers that worked on this, who in many ways saw this as a model team. We've talked a lot about the new organizational structure that's been talked about. There's been a lot talked about empowered teams, self-empowered, and the uh, power of teamwork. I think in many ways this, was a, this team was a model of what we want Xerox to become. We said, we're not going to New Hampshire just to win a contest picking up tennis balls. It wasn't the victory that we were after here. It's what we could learn ourselves as time to market, because that's how we started. We decided we would treat the project that way. But more importantly, if this was to be a partnership with a high school, we were going to be the best partnership. We wanted to uh, work with this set of kids and just show them how exciting, challenging, and fun engineering was. The partnering between the engineers 
uh, here at Xerox and the students at Wilson, it, it, it couldn't have been better. We really wanted to see whether or not we could build a relationship with the school and with the students so that they could come out with something. We have a lot to offer. And in this day where education is of paramount of importance and where you know that the students that are in school today are going to be the ones who we're going to depend on as far as our future is concerned tomorrow, then you know the importance and the value of our maintaining a good, solid relationship so that we could kind of help them help us. It was just an incredible experience. Um, the U.S. first idea is not that it's so new to have adults and students working together, but it's that an industry or a large business would release its people long enough to share their knowledge, to, to allow children who are going to be their next employees to be under their feet just long enough so that the kids have some idea that they want to be like these people. This was, I think, the first time that I've ever heard about a project where the reality was better than the dream. Usually when I get an idea from, from a, a staff member or from industry or from anybody, before you start worrying about how you're going to make it happen, you have that minute where you think, oh, this could be wonderful. And um, I had that moment of, this could be wonderful, and it was better um, than I had hoped it would be. Um, the, 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 the way the youngsters felt about it, the, 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 um, the relationship between the engineers and the students, um, the kind of commitment on the part of the teachers and the Xerox people, um, what the youngsters learn, what they will never forget. <laughs> My whole experience with working with the engineers at Xerox was fun and it helped me decide whether or not if I wanted to be an engineer and go to college. This convinced me that I would have to get a good education to be somebody and plus it would have to be fun at the same time. When I was a child, someone um, basically did the same for me at, a Columbia, at Columbia University and I wanted to basically get back to these to these kids, um, this experience to these kids also, and just introduce them to it, give them the opportunity that most of them probably would never have. I learned that people, if given the opportunity, are willing to take the opportunity and, and learn. I think that as a professional, I believe we can all reach out to these students. I think in terms of projects, this is, this is a great way to let kids know that, that engineering really can be exciting. So something like this, it, it's a start, and I, I think that, you know, from that standpoint, this is, this is a great program. For them, I think it was a, a great experience because they got to work elbow to elbow with professionals, engineers. And this is what's unreal for students most of the time is in school, when they're studying something uh, in math or in science, we'll often say, these are things that engineers need to know but they don't know what engineers do. So <laughs> they're not too sure why they would need to know these things. And I think more than that, they got to work with people who were excited about their career. The number one thing you find when you're teaching that seems to affect students is enthusiasm. They saw enthusiastic engineers, people putting in Saturdays, putting in uh, late hours at night in their basements because they were excited about the competition. They were, they were curious and they were eager to solve a problem. When I first heard about this contest, I felt that it was beneficial in two directions. We talk an awful lot about how it's going to benefit the high schools. I saw a little bit of a different benefit. The engineers here did a marvelous job at explaining what they were doing and how they were testing it, because when students go in and try to decide for themselves whether or not they want to become an engineer, they kind of have to see themselves in somebody else's role so that they can arrange their career and their study habits to really want to be like them. This has been, Paul Ayers defined us as being a learning organization. This was a learning 
experience for us, for us all to learn together. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have one final award. It's called the Chairman's Award. It's for the best partnership, the most superior partnership between the school and the business. And this year, our Chairman's Award for the first U.S. First Award goes to the Xerox Corporation and Joseph C. Wilson Medical School of Rochester, New York. Congratulations to Xerox and the Joseph C. Wilson Magnet School. Shortly after we gave the kits out, we started to get concerned that we might lose the real goal here as some of the competitors got so much into the competition that the goal was to win. And we said the goal is to get as many kids involved as we could. So we quickly went out and called every company that was participating and reminded them that the most important prize coming from this competition wouldn't be the trophy for the one that achieved the most points. It would be the Chairman's Award. We decided that Xerox had gone the extra mile to do this. And it was in large part due to the fact that they had demonstrated, A, that they didn't go to the small private school that is most likely to participate and win and the least likely to need this kind of activity or role models. They also demonstrated that their goal throughout wasn't just to show these kids engineering, it was to show them sportsmanship. It was to show them team participation. It was to show them that you can have fun doing a good job. The participation among the engineers and the students was, it was outstanding. Is that somehow it goes to the intangible spirit that was created out of this event, that there was a real strong sense of community between the folks at Xerox and the kids at Wilson. You know, there were absolutely people behind the scenes that, that whose names didn't necessarily make it on all the lists, and those people all should be thanked and rewarded, and a, a tremendous outpouring of effort from all walks of Xerox, model makers, technicians, designers, as well as engineers. It was definitely a sense of culmination that all this effort and all this time and all these long hours had finally come to this. It was definitely a sense of this was a fulfillment of all this activity.